Welcome back to UX case studies and this is where we go deep into a product to unearth some tremendous UX lessons and in this case we'll be looking at a product failure. Now build as a $199 AI powered device that could replace your phone. The R1 sold over 10,000 units in just 24 hours. But what was the promise? Well it was a pocket sized device and it was a pocket sized AI assistant that was powered by something called a large action model. But what happens when big promises collide with real world use? And what happens when users discover that what they thought was cutting edge AI may actually turn out to be just a set of fragile scripts. Well, this is where UX comes in. And today we're going to be unpacking exactly why the R1 rabbit struggled and what could have been done differently. Now, the lessons it teaches us about building trust through design are crucial. So let's get into it. Now, before we tear into any failures, let's give some credit where it's due. Well, the R1 rabbit's industrial design by teenage engineering, it actually was quite striking to be fair. The bright orange body, the playful scroll wheel stood out in a sea of black rectangles, that is, phones. It felt fresh, basically. The idea of reducing screen time by offering a dedicated AI device seemed promising. You see, it was a problem worth exploring. The R1 asked an important question. Do we really need screens for everything? But unfortunately, that's where the positives ended because the R1 quickly showed that vision without execution is actually a UX nightmare. So let's break this down into the biggest UX red flags. So our first one, fragile core functionality. And this is where the Rabbit R1 promised how to learn how to use apps for you. But CoffeeZilla's investigation exposed that the so-called large action model wasn't adaptive at all. It wasn't adaptive AI. It was hard coded automation scripts using ChatGPT 3.5. So it was using an older version of ChatGPT and a tool called Playwright to function. But this means that it wasn't learning, of course. It was clicking around like a bot. Now, if an app changed its layout, guess what would happen? Well, the R1 broke. If a capture appeared, well, game over. So from a UX standpoint, this was catastrophic. The entire value proposition was adaptability for the Rabbit R1, but in practice, it was brittle, unpredictable, well, and just frustrating. Second, missing essentials. And this is where the R1 required a SIM card, but it didn't let you make phone calls or send text messages. So why did it need a SIM card? See, that was the unknown question for so many customers. It shipped with no core apps, no maps, no calendar, no banking, just a handful of demos that well, often didn't work. So imagine buying a phone replacement only to realize that it can't replace even the most basic functions of your phone. You see, that disconnect between expectation and reality, well, is UX malpractice. In many cases, some people call that dark UX as well. But in this case, it's for products which can exist. Third, interaction design that overcomplicated simplicity. So users had to rely on the scroll wheel, which is designed as part of the product, and a push to talk button and voice commands. Now the experience though, it felt clunky and quite often you were left wondering if it had even understood your request at all. In user-centered design, clarity is everything. Now if I'm unsure whether my command was heard, that equals cognitive friction. That's a barrier or a load. Now, users would abandon products quickly when frustration like that starts to stack up. Number four, trust and transparency. Now, CoffeeZilla also raised questions about Rabbit's past. Now, the company had previously operated under a different name, and that name was Gamma, G-A-M-A. -A. Now, this was during the NFT and crypto hype. Now it had raised millions and then it had decided to pivot into AI. Now, whether or not you may believe that history matters in this kind of corporate environment, actually perception matters. And UX isn't just about interfaces. It's also about the trust that customers, users, humans place in your brand. Now, when hype outpaces honesty, every failure just basically feels amplified. 
So the R1 didn't just fail at task, it failed at building confidence, building trust. So how could activities within UX help the R1 rabbit? How could these failures have been caught earlier? Well, here's some newest activities that we're going to basically highlight that could have made a real difference. And our first one, a value proposition workshop. Now, a VPW brings the team together. It helps them to map the user's needs, pains, gains, jobs to be done, and so forth against the product vision. Now, if Rabbit had run this properly, they might have realized that people expect basic phone features if you market a phone replacement. A device that requires a SIM card but cannot make calls basically is a deal breaker. Lack of app support equals instant abandonment. Now by surfacing these gaps early, they could have prioritized the essentials first, maybe try to work on creating some kind of viable MVP where some of those things at least would have worked. Now our second one, UX research cheat sheet approaches. Now this is a really nice handy way of using a handful of usability tests with early prototypes to show uh, where users have found the interactions confusing, the features incomplete, perhaps the reliability questionable, right? So there are ways in which you can do this. Now, a single round, even just a single round of testing can save potentially millions in launch backlash. But the key is to make sure you do those usability testing rounds correctly. Our third one, facilitated AI workshops. Now these workshops explore what AI can realistically do and more importantly, what it cannot do. Now if Rabbit had been honest about these sessions, about the limitations of scripted automation, they could have adjusted expectations, marketed differently or designed around those limits. But instead, guess what they did? They led with the hype and hype always collapses when UX doesn't deliver. So we're gonna talk about now the deeper UX flaw here the real red flag, and that's launching half-baked finished products at full price. <laughs> now users paid, remember, $200, $199 exactly, expecting a polished device. But what they got in many cases was close to a paid beta, a bad beta. The gap between the promised value and the delivered value is where trust just basically evaporated. The, the gap was too big. And because CoffeeZilla's report highlighted not just product issues, but company credibility questions. The backlash hit even harder. But you see, here's the thing. Users don't hate unfinished products. So if you frame them honestly, take for example, Gmail's launch in 2004. See, it stayed in beta for five years. Now Google set expectations. Now this is new. This will evolve. These were the expectations. Users loved it because they were invited to go on a journey with Google. But you see, that's the difference. There's transparency, there's respect, there's clear communication. Without those, a beta feels like a scam. And with them, it feels like innovation. So what can we take away from the Rabbit R1 story? Well, big visions are exciting, but user experience is where those visions either succeed or fail. If your product cannot do the basics, if it hides behind misleading technology, or if it sells a dream without building trust, it simply won't last. Now the Rabbit R1 reminds us of this key lesson. UX isn't just about designing screens. It's about clarity, credibility, and care for the user, for the human, for your customer. Now thanks for watching. Stay present, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.